get right to it, Nathan. Yep. The top it. 25 SUVs and crossovers with the most ground clearance. What's number 25? My number 25 is the Lexus GX. It has 8.1 inches of ground clearance. Now, this is an interesting vehicle because it is an off-road, proper off-road vehicle, but because of all the crap they got hanging off of it, it really does take down the ability of it to go off-road and also with 8.1 inches of ground clearance frankly you're not going to get over much yeah and keep in mind guys just because it has a lot of ground clearance doesn't mean that it has a lot of breakover angle or approach angle or um departure departure angle, angle or any of that kind of stuff this is, these are just basically very tall station wagons yes at yes. least at the top of this list at the, uh, yeah yeah as we go down then you'll see more hardcore off-road vehicles all right let's get to number 24 which is the acura rdx it also has 8.1 inches of ground clearance now unlike the lexus the acura rdx is based on more of a front drive uh platform that has a rear drive as an option so that's the Acura RDX. And let's go to 23, which is the Audi Q5. It has 8.2 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, I mean, these are vehicles that basically you'd want to take on a dirt road. You know, they've got enough ground clearance to go in snow, right? We're talking about basically how big of a rock you can drive over before you actually break something underneath the vehicle. And the other reason for these vehicles being relatively, I think eight inches, well, that's about the base for any kind of four-wheel drive off-road vehicle. Yeah, actually, uh, EPA states that anything over eight inches of ground clearance can be considered a truck, which we found out recently. Well, we messed up on the Trackhawk and said that it had uh, a gas, gas guzzler tax. tax. It doesn't, by the way. So so basically, this is more about like having height so you can see over vehicles versus yeah. height so you can go uh, up a mountain. Right, go over a boulder and everything else. Right. But we are going to get to those vehicles. Let's go to number 22, which is the BMW X5. It also has 8.2 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, and these are uh, very kind of family-friendly tall wagons, basically, because number 21 my wife has, which is the Lexus R. X with, I'm sorry, 8.2 inches of ground clearance. And the same thing with that vehicle. It's front wheel drive. It's got, she's got the hybrid. So the electric motors uh, power the rear wheels. Right. And even with snow tires, it does okay in the snow. So, you know, not hardcore off-roaders by any stretch of the imagination. But you'll see as we go down this list, they do get more and more off-road worthy. But it's kind of weird because number 19, I didn't expect to see on this list. And that's the Jaguar f -Pace. Oh, whoa, 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 20, you missed 20. I missed 20. Uh, you know why? Because number 20 is a serious hardcore off-road vehicle. <laughs> and that is the Honda CRV. <laughs> yes, that, that is so, a very serious. 8.2 inches of ground clearance. Now, just so you know, I actually took the CRV off-road a little bit on a really hard dirt trail, which was a little bit of a challenge for it, and it did great. That turbo engine, which is an option, really, really good stuff. Let's move to number 19. This is the one I did not expect to see on this list, and that's the Jaguar F-Pace at 8.4 inches of ground clearance. And you know, the crazy thing about these cars is we've actually tested most of them off-road. I think we're the only publication that actually takes these vehicles off-road, mm -hmm. either up Gold Mine Hill or Cliffhanger 2.0. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, we know how good they are off-road. And once again, I took the Jaguar kind of up a dirt road and drove it around a field, and uh, I wouldn't do it again. Well, street bias tires, guys. Most of these vehicles, probably the first half of the list, most of these vehicles really aren't meant to do anything more than go into a little bit of mud, a little bit of snow, and then on some dirt trails, which is fine. That's what most people do with them anyway. But like with the Jaguar F-Pace, I drove it. It's a really tight suspension, so I really wouldn't recommend doing anything other than very, very light off-roading. Now, the next vehicle on our list is actually relatively off-road worthy because we did test the previous version of this, and it was actually really good off-road. The problem, like you mentioned, is tires. It's yeah. just got horrible tires. And that vehicle is? The Porsche Cayenne. How much ground clearance? 8.5 inches of ground clearance. It's respectable. Yeah, it is. And you're, you're right. When we took it off-road, I remember I was sitting behind Roman, who was, by the way, like smiling like crazy as he was cruising around uh, and I was watching the suspension work and that was a really cool vehicle in terms of four-wheel independent suspension but it still had uh, pretty good articulation so good stuff there but still not enough to be serious off-road now it's interesting the next three vehicles are the same brand yeah and we uh, could just go add them up because they all have the same grand but I'm surprised they aren't farther down the list yeah I am too um, I think part of it has to do with the fact that when you have a vehicle that is high off the ground, uh, your MPGs tend to suffer. That's a good point. And so I think that, they, that perhaps they all been brought down just a little bit to help a little bit with that. And that is all Subaru. Subaru, uh, and they're all the same. The, the uh, uh, sorry, the Crosstrek, the Outback, and the Forester all are reported to have 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty good. 
Yeah, it's good, but uh, I thought Subaru would be at the, you know, toward the bottom of the list because they have such a reputation. You watch your commercials yeah. and it's the road less traveled. Uh, we haven't tested them recently off-road, obviously. We wouldn't want to get our hands on one. And Nathan, I was so close to renting an Outback uh, because I want to take it off-road. I just couldn't get the rental company to assure me that they'd give me an Outback. Uh, That's the problem, right? right you show right. up there and all of a sudden, there's your Mazda. I'm like, no, I want the Outback. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. We'll get around it one of these days. Anyway, so let's move on to number 14. So we skipped a few because they're all lumped together. Number uh, 17, 16, and 15 They're are Subarus, all Subarus. Yeah. So number 14 is the Jeep Cherokee track, uh, track hawk. See, I'm going to do the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. 8.8 .8 ground. Yeah, that's pretty good. 8.8 .8 inches of ground. Out of all the crossover vehicles on this list, I think that the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk is one of the more capable ones off road. It has the right tires and pretty good ground clearance. Its approach angle, I think, should be better, but otherwise, it's really good off road. So the Trailhawk, of course, is the most off road worthy of the Jeep. Uh, cars. cars, yeah, they the Cherokees, cars. right? So they have different models, and um, they put a little sticker on it that says uh, it's uh, trail rated. Yeah, trail rated. And what that means is that it can ford so much water that it's got the uh, hooks, these red hooks, where you can actually pull it out mm -hmm. in the front and in or the back, or pull other people out, or, or pull the people out. So there are a set of criteria. And there's a video on our website that I did a long time ago that goes into exactly what it means when it's trail rated. Right. Um, and I got to give it up to um, Jeep because we went on the launch of that with my, me and Ian, our videographer, and they actually set up a really challenging off-road course, course for it. Usually when you go on these programs, right, they set up a course that's just hard enough for the vehicle to do. I think you're talking about the Compass. No, I'm talking about the Trailhawk. Okay, the Trailhawk. Trailhawk. You yeah. and I went to that Trailhawk. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in Moab. Mm, in Texas. Texas, oh, that's right, it was in Texas, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the course was hard, remember? It was, it was yeah, like, yeah, 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 it was like this steep hill, and there were rocks, and there were boulders, and yeah. actually some of the Jeeps got broken. Yeah, actually, okay, California, we'll, we'll get into that right. in a minute. The point is, is that it is a really off-road worthy vehicle on this list. It's right where ground comes in. Right, that was a Renegade. Too many freaking Jeeps. Yeah, I know, that was so a, many. That, that was yeah. a Renegade. Yeah, yeah, in California we went and did the, yeah. the Jeep. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number 13. Which is surprising. Which is surprising. That's the Mazda CX-9. It has 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance. Just like the Trailhawk. Yep. The Cherokee Trailhawk. But it is not as off-road worthy. I've taken it off-road, and it's a great vehicle. They did such an amazing job on the interior, the exterior, the engine, the turbocharged engine. Great stuff. But it has lips. It has com corners that really stick out there and almost are begging to be torn off if you did take it off-road. I highly recommend this being a snow vehicle and a dirt-only vehicle. Do not take it over rocks. It is very delicate in the front. Now the next two vehicles have the same amount of ground clearance because they're from the same manufacturer, but I would only take one of them off-road. Go ahead and tell them what they are. Yeah, that's the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Lexus LX at 8.9 inches of ground clearance. And this is a classic case of where the departure and approach angles are vastly different. So oh, yeah. the Lexus has this kind of this open maw spindle grill that hangs on down. Right. And uh, it's really badly... Uh, at least designed yeah, for going off-road. Whereas... The, when you're talking about the Toyota Land Cruiser, it is one of the most capable vehicles in its class, period. It is fantastic off-road. We had a great time bouncing around in it. And you really, you'd have to work really hard to find anything from the factory that's a better off-road vehicle. So it is really the tale of two completely different vehicles that happen to be built on the same platform. Now we're getting into the range of vehicles that have air suspension. So yes. some of these are different because you can lower and raise them using air suspension. That's so right. uh, you'll you'll notice that some of these are pretty high, but that's not necessarily because the car rides at this height. It's because it could be raised to that height. That is correct. And let's start that with number 10, which is the Audi Q7. Oh, you missed number 11. I'm oh, sorry. Number <laughs> 11. I'm really bad at this. Uh, number 11. You're is making the, fun of me about my eyes. I know I was, but that was <laughs> off camera. Uh, <laughs> number 11 is the Nissan Armada and the Infiniti QX80 at 9.2 inches of ground clearance. So this kind of surprised me because I recently drove the Armada and I always felt like it was a taller vehicle in the saddle, but that's just the way it feels when you're driving it. The good off-road car, car, well, both of them are pretty good off-road. Yeah, they're classic uh, body on frame, uh, basically trucks. Yep. So uh, whenever you have a truck with a traditional four-wheel drive system versus an all-wheel drive system, then off-roading gets much easier. It's much more natural. Let's face it, trucks are just more of the natural off-road athletes. They if are. If I could they use are, that analogy. Especially because most of them have an, a, a solid rear axle, really good for uh, articulation. One thing, though, about the Infiniti, 
the Infinity did stuff that I didn't expect it to do and somehow managed not to mar up its giant wheels. And it's one of the problems with a lot of these luxury brands is they'll put massive, really expensive, heavy wheels on them and you lose a lot. You're not able to air down as much effectively. And if you come up to a rock, you know, you're going to slice into a wheel that costs thousand dollars. So, you know, there are problems with that, which is why we would recommend both in the case of the Toyota Land Cruiser and with the Nissan Armada, the lesser because they tend to have more meat and better tires. Okay. Now, now we're getting to the top 10. Let's take a quick break here and yeah. get some questions. Any questions there, yeah, uh, Michael? Of, speaking of the Armada, guys, uh, someone wants to know if they made a Pro 4X version of the Armada, do you think it would sell well? No. Um, I don't think it would sell at all. Which is probably why they don't make it. Yeah, I think that's a classic like mo soccer mom vehicle. Even though it can go off-road, it's a vehicle that most f families use to carry large groups of young soccer players. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, okay, I agree with you. It wouldn't sell well. I think it might be a nice little niche vehicle. Perhaps something that would, at, at the most, please put in a uh, locking rear diff of some sort. That would be freaking awesome. And I think it would make the truck a better truck. And I think it would sell a little bit more to a few people who are enthusiasts at the very notion of just, hey, my truck can go off-road better. And then here's the other thing, you know, you could tell which vehicles go off-road by kind of how much off-road support and additional gear you can buy for the vehicle, right? So obviously a classic one would be a Jeep, right? There's this huge community of aftermarket parts and accessories. Right. And so I'm not sure I've seen a lot of Armada access off-road accessories or parts. Ah, but overseas, yeah, it, might be it true. is the patrol. And overseas patrols are very popular and they, they, the UN uses them and there are modifications that you can buy for them. So we're just saying locally, probably not, but worldwide, who's to say? Any we'll, if it, we'll stop for another question at yeah. the top five. All right, so number 10 on this list is really an interesting one. It, yeah. I, I, it's the Audi Q7 with how many ground? 9.6 inches of ground clearance. I think that's because of air really suspension. Good. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, I've, I've asked people before, because I always thought that the Audi would do as good as the uh, Porsche off-road, and I've been told that it's just not an off-roader. Yeah, it's definitely a soccer mom. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's it's been... really just not very happy off-road. It does great in the so, snow. So really I, good. I, I got, got to take the latest uh, Q5 off-road. Uh -huh. I got to go to Mexico, and I, uh, I broke it, Nathan. I actually broke it off-road. I felt so terrible. So we were... We were kind of going down a dirt road in Mexico. We were in the Baja Peninsula. Uh -huh. Nothing hard, just a dirt road. Right. And then we came upon a beach, and it was a sandy beach. Huh. And I'm like, um, I was with the, the editor of Motor Trend. Okay. And we were like, hey, let's get some great video of you know slow motion of, of the wheel spinning and the sand flying. You get this kind of cool like yeah, spiral yeah. effect. So I wanted to show off, and I apologize, Giotti, because it's definitely my fault. So I was going very quickly in the sand. Sand flying, spinning, and I hit a bump. And what happened was when I hit the bump, the back valance caught in the sand and just tore right off. Ugh. Yeah, so I felt terrible about that. Uh, and it you know, tore that lower bump over valance oh, no. off the back of the car. Not completely, but enough for it to hang there and look like you know, it had been uh, abused, which it had been. But I mean, you were trying to make a video. And unfortunately, from time to time, incidents do happen. And you know, one of the things we do at TFL is that we, we, when we make a mistake, we say, you know, mea culpa, it's our fault, and we admit to it. So, um, all right, let's move on though, okay? And, and, and you know, that was a real good moment from you. You know, I, I'm proud of you. Uh, Toyota 4Runner for number nine, and that has 9.6 inches of ground clearance. And in my mind, in terms of a crossover, proper SUV, Whatever fights in that class, you cannot get better off-road than the Toyota 4Runner for holding more than five people because you can get a third row seat and it has an awesome off-road package. Great vehicle. Yeah, it's also got all the goodies. It's yeah, got, it's got hill toys. descent control. It's got uh, locking diffs. Hill ascent control. control. So you're able, yeah. you, know, you just spin a knob and... It yeah, goes and, and, does it. And, and I found out something else. Yeah. It actually works when you're backing up <laughs> because we had to back down the cliffhanger and uh, it actually worked. In reverse. In reverse. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it's, a, it's a good system. It's a good system. And you know, I think if you put a snorkel on that thing, it would actually do really well. Oh yeah. And people do put snorkels. All the time. All and there's the time. a vehicle that has a huge aftermarket off-roading component to it, kind of like the Xterra did before they ended it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you look back, you can find like uh, second and third generation forerunners for uber cheap, unfortunately, they have a quarter of a million miles on them or more, but they're still out there and they make great platforms and for off You can lift them, even you though can, it's independent suspension. Them, yeah. You know? yeah, you can get a good lift on them. You can, there's so much you can do with them. Great vehicles, I really love Toyota 4Runners. Now, now, number eight is interesting because we haven't driven it and I wouldn't take it off-road, but go ahead, tell me what it is. It is the Range Rover Velar 
which, and this one is with air suspension. I think there's an option, which is why this was noted. 9.8 inches of ground clearance. That's a lot. That's a lot. And you know, it is a Range Rover, so Range Rover does have that reputation for going off-road. I've been on a lot of Range Rover programs, and they're another company that doesn't do one of these kind of, you know, fake off-road courses. You, they take you into serious off-road. Uh, the issue always is tires, right? Yeah. The tires that come on them are usually just 20s or 22s with tiny sidewalls and probably very easily puncture on the side because they're pure street tires. But the, the vehicles are extremely off-road capable and oftentimes Range Rovers have not one but two different ride height adjustments. Yeah, yeah, we've noticed that on other vehicles that we've driven from uh, the Rover brand. Uh, so let's move on to one that surprised me and I completely forgot about it because, well, it's been around forever and that is the Toyota Sequoia, which has, wow, 10 inches of ground clearance. But it's the four-wheel drive model, by the way. The two-wheel drive model, I believe, is slightly lower. That's another classic truck. It is a truck. It's a Tundra with a, you know, with a roof. One that's been around far too long. <laughs> yes, they updated the nose yeah, they did. <laughs> and the they, lights. They, they actually do have an, like, an off-road package for it. But, so there's slightly upgraded suspension as well. The thing is, is that this is a, an old school truck, but there's a thing about it off-road that it's a little secret. It's a system that works with you when you're going off-road, traction control and all that, Ain't so great. It, it's, it, it stops you when you're really trying to push it off-road. So I highly recommend if you want to go off-road and you want a Toyota product, go back and spend more money and get the Toyota Land Cruiser because it is a vastly better vehicle off-road. Okay, let's move on uh, to number six. It's interesting this is number six. I thought it'd be closer to number one. It's the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Yeah, and you know, um Obviously, that's got a lot more off-road goodies than just ground clearance. Ten inches of ground clearance. Uh, and a lot of people lift them, and you know, if you for that, ten inches is just barely enough. Because if you want to go seriously off-road, you probably want to air down, which means you'll lose ground clearance. But what is amazing is just the amount of difference that, like, two inches from the top of our list to where we're at now makes. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you well, your two inches and mine are so different. Well, that's because I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But no, you're I, right. I have the proper two inches for, for my purpose, Nathan. Fair enough. Uh, let's, so this, is, this is a family show. So let's, let's move. No, uh, no, we got to do questions. We yeah, said we before we get to the top five, we got to do questions. Go ahead, young man. Any well, questions? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Mike's still, still a little I'm dazed and confused. I'm on that joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a really interesting one, or funny one for me, at least from 1970, Honda CL100. Yeah, hi, Honda CL100. Would you rather drive a lowered SUV or a raised crossover? Raised crossover. My reasoning is I love to bash and jump and bounce around, and crossovers can feel like uh, rally cars from time to time. Well, come on, come on guys, that, that truck back there, big green, right, that's a K10, it's pretty classic. You raise a K10, you slam a C5, right? The C5 is the two-wheel drive right. version of that truck, right. K10 is it. So any Honda you slam that's uh, a road car, any Honda that has any kind of off-road, you, you, even Passport. the Hondas. Honda Passport, oh, God, which is... Uh, okay, maybe there's no Hondas really that are that, except for the Ridgeline, sort of, kind of. Kind of sort of, kind of, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Yeah, uh, Jesse is curious if the JL Rubicon, the new Jeep, will have more ground clearance than the JK. You know, that's a really good question, and I've heard two schools of thought on that. One is yes and one is no. So the question is, does the new Jeep have more oh. ground clearance than the old Jeep? If yeah, you, I forgot If you that. didn't hear it, yeah. yeah. And we, obviously we don't know for sure. We, th they are so, they're just holding all of their cards as close to their chest as they can. However, we recently saw a picture of the test model sitting next to a regular uh, uh, current model Rubicon and they looked really close in ride height. So yeah. it won't be that different, I can guess. Nathan, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point somebody's gonna crawl underneath one when it's out there testing. and Just get like tape measure. <laughs> yeah, exactly, from the pumpkin Jeep down. people are crazy. They'll do that when the thing is moving. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, so we're, we're almost there. Guys, we're going to see, hopefully, the rumor is we're going to see the new JL at the 2017 Los Angeles Auto Show, which we will be attending in force. Yes, one more question. Actually, that, I don't think that's as much of a rumor anymore. Yeah, Tom, it's, Tom yeah, it's, and I did a video yeah, it's not a rumor. We're, it's going to be, it's yeah, going to be unveiled in LA. Okay, so it's going to be, it's confirmed. You took away the, like, the, the suspense. All right, let's right. get to the top five, Nathan. Top okay. five crossovers and SUVs. Now, this one's going to blow your mind if you're a Jeep fan but didn't realize this, and that is number five is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. It has 10.8 inches of ground clearance. Now, since I had my senior moment, <laughs> the uh, vehicle that we're talking about now, we did take off-road in Moab. Yeah. We took it up some pretty hard. We took it on Moab, and we dro drove it off-road in Texas. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that handle, actually a lot of things that that Toyota was talking about has. It has a hill ascent and descent control, 
optional. It has a whole bunch of this stuff. Now the tra Trailhawk is really the beefed up version, the most off-road worthy of all the Jeep Grand Cherokees. And especially if you can get that with like a diesel, oh my God, you have all that torque and you have a proper off-road vehicle like that. They're nearly unstoppable. They really are impressive vehicles, especially because after you're going off-road, unlike a Wrangler, you get into you know highways, it's a nice smooth station wagon. Unlike a Wrangler though, you can do damage to that. A Wrangler has much more kind of beefy underneath. It's another vehicle we've yeah. damaged before too. Yeah. Bumpers, it's well, underneath something. Right. Like so this this thing is obviously more of a crossover. Uh, it's a unibody vehicle. It's yes. always been a unibody. People think the Grand Cherokee has been a truck, but it's always been a unibody vehicle yeah. from the very get-go. Although it used to have a solid rear axle, and then it moved recently to an independent rear suspension. So that 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 part is sort of truckish, I guess. All right. Now we're talking about vehicles with the uh, air suspension. So what's number four, please? That's the Range Rover Sport with 10.9 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, that's a lot for a low vehicle. Yeah, yeah. And it's a small vehicle, once again, very capable off-road, but uh, this, the tires and wheels are absolutely useless. We've had those a lot. We've towed with them. You know, that's the kind of car that feels more at home cruising down Hollywood Boulevard than it does the White Rim Trail in Boab. But it will do the White Rim Trail. That's the thing about it is that you hit a few buttons and you just hold on tight and it will surprise you. But at the end of the day, if you guys are serious about off-roading, first of all, maybe look a little higher, but also consider better wheels and tires. All right, next one. Number three, and that is the Land Rover Discovery Sport. That's 11.3 inches of ground clearance. Now we're talking, we're nearly at a foot, and that is impressive. Once again, air suspension, it rises, it, up. It, it rises up on its tippy toes, and actually it's quite impressive because you can do kind of the thing where it's easy to load, right? So uh -huh. it'll, it'll squat down, making for easy ingress and egress, making for easy loading of the rear, yep. and then it'll just raise itself up on its tippy toes. That's right. And in between, when you're on the highway, it'll drop down a little bit for better aerodynamics as you drive. We recently took one of those off-road up to um, Goldmine Hill, and we have that video on TFL Car, I yep, believe. it's on Car. And uh, yeah, it's killer off-road, but once again, if it had off-road tires, that thing would be nearly unstoppable. It's impressive. All right, number two. Number two is the Range Rover. Regular Range Rover, big beast. 11.5 inches of ground clearance. Six. 11.6, that's my five. I, <laughs> is that, yeah, that's a six, you're right. Wow, he reads my writing better than I do. Uh, <laughs> okay, 11.6 inches. Once clearance. again, air suspension, there's yeah. like an emergency mode where it actually goes above its highest mode in case you need to uh, do something like Ford a river and the cool thing about these actually they are tested Range Rover does rate them and they tell you exactly how many millimeters their it's millimeters they're rated for and if you ever go to their uh, headquarters they have an off-road course where they actually drive through water through water with them and if you put a snorkel on them it gets pretty unstoppable yeah it's it's another vehicle that you know they, they they're serious about off-roading that's the thing about all Rover products they test the hell out of them they really do push them but at the end of the day, you know, better tires always makes for a better vehicle. And that's one thing that, of course, we could do with the Range Rover. Let's get to number one because it's one Drum that roll. a lot of you guys aren't expecting. You wouldn't expect me to say Mercedes-Benz, would you? No, I wouldn't. The Mercedes-Benz G550 4x4 squared. It has 17.24 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, that thing, I saw it on um, public roads for the first time up in Vancouver, of course. Uh -huh. And I saw it in LA, of course. And, oh, you see that thing and you're like, holy cow, you could drive like a uh, Fiat underneath, underneath it. it. Yeah, or, or a Miata. Either one you could drive. It, it's that tall. If you live in L.A. and you're driving one of these, seriously, um, please, just once take it off road. <laughs> yes, please just do. go to Gorman. Go, go to Bismo Beach up north. Just take it off road. It's not built for the streets of L.A. It's built for like the Serengeti. I'm sorry. I just I see that and, I, and my heart hurts. Yeah, well, that's one of those classic vehicles where it costs so much <laughs> that you're afraid to actually do any damage because well, fixing it, it's going to get very expensive. But it is uh, just crazy. It's like a lifted uh, vehicle right from the factory. Yeah, it is. And, and it's, it, it is seriously built for off-road. It may be the most off-road worthy vehicle uh, that's currently built or being sold in the United States. And, and Nathan, I'm going to put this out there. It's true for a tenth of that price. Uh -huh. You could get a Wrangler and lift it just as high. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I, I do, that's, that's, that's and for a twentieth of the price, you can get that truck and lift it just as high. And lift it just as high <laughs> and, and do what you want with it. Yeah, now, by the way, let's. Uh, if you have any vehicles you want to add to this list, go ahead and ask our man right over there. What do we got? 
yeah, we did we did miss one, guys. The what? Compass Trailhawk has 8.5 inches of ground clearance. Yes, this, this list is about as comprehensive as we could, but th we did miss some vehicles. We had to kind of condense, and we probably should have added that one, I would agree. And that, the Compass is one of the ones that Tommy and I took off-road in Moab, and it did okay. It's not, it really is just a slightly stretched uh, little, what is the little guy called nowadays? The, the Renegade? Renegade, yeah. It's basically a slightly longer Renegade, that's it. But it did great. It did great for what it was doing. The only thing I would say is uh, we actually called uh, our friends over at Ram and asked them how they would recommend taking vehicles to actually forge Ford water. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of good recommendations in that, in that story on TFL Truck. And one of them is, and this is not intuitive, it's kind of counterintuitive. It's not like how tall it is, but how much traction you have. And oftentimes you start to lose traction when you go in water. Uh, and so, uh, Vehicles become buoyant, yep. you lose traction, and next thing you know, you're floating down the river. So there are definite techniques on, on how to go off-road. Yeah, with bow wakes and everything yes, else. Yes, exactly. By the way, if you ever see somebody going across a river and all of a sudden their rear end rises, that's the first thing that will go up in the air because it's lighter than usually than the front end. That means that they are not doing it right and, and there, run. And there are good tips on there, like if yeah. you know, you're going to forward a river, make sure you see the other side. Oh, yeah. Uh, the other thing is hidden obstacles. You don't know what's underneath. So there's a whole process. We don't recommend it in these crossovers and SUVs. No, we don't. But if you want good recommendations, they are on our website. One more question, and let's call it uh, a show. Okay, uh, Spartan4623 wants to know, I'm going to like alter this right. a tiny bit. Is the new Bronco going to be a true truck, or is it going to be more like an SUV? Uh, so is the new Bronco going to be a true, tr true truck or an SUV crossover? I have a theory on that. Yeah, I think it's going to be based on the Everest, which is a vehicle that's currently made and sold in India. I think that's what they're going to use for the it's platform. Australia, too. I Australia, think. yeah. So I think they're probably going to Ford probably didn't develop a separate platform for it. They probably took one of their existing international plan for it and modified it. But the real answer is we don't know. We don't know. I, my, my guess is that it's going to have something to do with the new um, Ranger that they're developing specifically for the United States, and that platform may be shared with it. But we don't know for sure. And once again, another company that's playing their cards very close to their chest. Are we good, Michael? Or is there anything else you really want to get to? We're good. Well, guys, just be careful out there. Yeah, and remember, this will become a regular video, and we will read the comments later on. So go ahead and add them. And guys, thanks for watching. And remember, uh, over at our uh, truck channel we've got a preview for our new original series called uh, getting lucky getting lucky you gotta get, watch it check it out and uh, tomorrow on uh, tfl car we're publishing a video where you got to take a bmw around the track with paul right tell me what you did uh yeah i got to well i drove the car and paul raced the car so <laughs> we had an opportunity to take the bmw what, is, what was it the it's two, a two series yeah and it's it's sort of the spiritual successor to the 2002 from many years ago uh, this one is not an M2. And the, and the question we posed is, do you need an M BMW to go fast? And the answer will surprise you, and that's going to be on tomorrow's yep. episode of Hot or Not. And then later in the week, for more off-roading, uh, Tommy actually uh, took the JK, our long-term JK, and did a before video up a really challenging trail called Plane Crash. Right. Then l this weekend, Tommy and Michael, who's over there answering questions, uh, took it to our local uh, expert and we lifted it yes, and then yesterday you guys actually took it back on plane crash to see what it was like to drive a lifted jeep so we've got a before and after lift video that i think you guys will enjoy and that's thanks to our partners uh rugged ridge uh firestone and uh oh yeah falcon shocks that's right and the guys uh from terraflex falcon shocks so be sure to stay tuned for that. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Thanks for, thanks for watching. And remember, check out TFLcar and TFLtruck.com for more news views. And real world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.